Hi, welcome to another tutorial on factorizing quadratic trinomial expressions. Now in this particular tutorial I've picked the examples where you have an x term which is negative and the last term, the constant, is positive. So how do we factorize, for instance, 5x squared minus 23x plus 12? Well, we should know from past experience, the past tutorials, that this comes from expanding two brackets. Something like this, and the first two terms in the each of the brackets has got, have got to multiply together to give you the 5x squared. So what could it be? Well, it can only be 5x and x. 5x times x, let's just show you, that times that is going to give you your 5x squared. Now it doesn't matter whether you write x in the first bracket and 5x in the second bracket. It will always work out exactly the same. The next thing you need to do is find two numbers that multiply together to give you the last number here, in this case plus 12. Now there's lots of combinations of numbers that will give you plus 12 when multiplied together. I mean, I can think of, let's just write it down here, I can think of, for instance, plus 12 times plus 1. Or, you, remember you can switch these around, you could have plus 1 times plus 12. What else could you have? You could have the 4 and 3 combination. 4 plus 4 times plus 3 gives plus 12. And again, you could swap those round. And you've also got plus 6 and plus 2 combination. And you could swap those round having a 2 and a 6. OK? So let's just pick on one of them. Let's say we go for plus 12 plus 1, that combination. Let's just put that in here and see what we get. OK, so we now know that if we multiply the plus 12 with the plus 1, we're going to get plus 12, the value on the end of our expression. So we've covered that. What we've got to check now, in the usual way, is to see whether we've got the middle term, the minus 23x. And that comes from multiplying the 5x with the 1 and the 12 with the x. So if we carry that multiplication out, we've got 5x times 1, which is plus 5x. And we've got plus 12 times x, which is plus 12x. And you'll notice that what we've got here now, 5x plus 12x, comes to 17x, not the minus 23x. So we've got a problem. Okay, It's not this particular pairing. In fact, the more you think about it, it can't be any of these pairings where we have got plus numbers because if you have plus numbers here you're always going to get a plus x term here and a plus x term here and if you add them together you're always going to end up with a plus x term. So uh, how are we going to get this minus term? Well there are other combinations that multiply together to give plus 12. They've got to be to negative numbers. So you can't have plus 12 and a plus 1. That would be a bit silly. It's got to be a minus and a minus. And the same if we switch them around. Minus 1, minus 2. It's got to be the same for all of these combinations. It's got to be two negative numbers that are being multiplied together. OK, so this hasn't worked. So what can we do? Always switch your numbers around, OK, and check to see whether that works. And also, we've got to change the signs to minuses. So what we'll do, we'll have minus 1 here and minus 12 here. All right? Let's see what this gives. Well, we're still going to have the plus 12 on the end because minus 1 times minus 12 is plus 12. But these x terms are going to now be different. What we've got is 5x times minus 12, which is minus 60x. And we've got minus 1 times x, which is minus x. But what does this give us? Minus 61x. Well, at least we've got our minus x term, but not minus 23x. We switch the numbers around, so it's not this combination. 
So maybe it's the minus 4, minus 3 combination. Let's try that one. Minus 4, minus 3. So we'll put that in there, minus 4, minus 3. We'll take out the x terms because they're going to change. So what have we got this time? Again, we've got our plus 12 on the end, okay, from minus 4 times minus 3. But for the x terms, we've got 5x times minus 3, which is minus 15x. And we've got minus 4 times x, which is minus 4x. What does this give us? Minus 15x minus 4x is minus 19x, not the minus 23x. So what we need to do now is try switching the numbers the other way around. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put the 3 here and we'll put the 4 here. Minus 3 times minus 4, still plus 12. But what about these x terms? These are going to change now. So we'll rub those out and see what we get. We get 5x times minus 4, which is minus 20x. And we get minus 3 times x, minus 3x. And minus 20x minus 3x is minus 23x. Brilliant. OK, so we've hit the jackpot. We've got what we want. Now, if we didn't get what we wanted, then we've got to try another combination. And we would have gone on to try minus 6 with the minus 2. And if that didn't work, switch the numbers round. All right? OK, so this one's worked. So we've just got to put our solution up here. OK, so what I'd encourage you to do is always copy out what you've got, which is, in this case, 5x squared minus 23x plus 12. And write that it's identical to and it's identical to 5x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 4. OK? Now, I pick this next example. OK, it looks a lot harder, but there's a reason why I picked it. We've got to factorize then 10x squared minus 46x plus 24. So what's this identical to? Well, one thing I said in my earlier tutorials that whenever you're asked to factorize anything, OK, what you should always look for, first of all, is is there a common factor? Is there a number that goes into each of these terms? There certainly wasn't in this particular example. I know I didn't say at the time, but in this example, we've got 2 that goes into both the 10, the minus 46 and the 24. So if you've got a common factor, always put it out first of all. So we'd have 2 outside of a bracket. And in here would go 5x squared, so that 2 times 5x squared gives 10x squared. Then we'd have 2 times minus 23x. That would give us the minus 46x. And then we need 2 times 12 to give plus 24. So it'd have that. Now you've got a quadratic factor. And quite often, quadratic factors factorize again. And we've already seen that this quadratic factor does factorize again. We did it up here. So what we can do is say that this is identical to 2 multiplied by 2 what we call linear factors. Those linear factors are these ones up here. 5x minus 3 and the x minus 4. Now this is fully factorized. You can't factorize these linear factors any further. And so always then be careful. Always check to see whether in any expression you ask to factorize, first of all, check to see whether there's any common factors. And if there are, bring them out the front of a bracket and then look to see if you can factorize the remaining factor. OK, well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial where, as I say, I looked at having a negative x term here and a positive term here. In the next tutorial, I'm going to switch these around. We're going to have a plus here and a minus here. All right?